Do we have yet another race hoax on our hands? It sure looks like it. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we're going to talk about allegations of racism at a Duke Brigham Young University volleyball game. Let's back up a little bit here to explain what's going on before we get to the video and all the details. Now, a woman on the volleyball team says that a fan at BYU in Utah was heckling her in a racist way. They yelled a racial slur. And as a result of this, the person was banned from the stadium arena, whatever it is. There was all kind of statements put out there. It made the news. There's all kind of stuff. But the problem is that it probably didn't happen. And there's witnesses to say that it probably didn't happen. Now, before I go any further, let's roll the clip. If you want to see the clip in full without my commentary, the link, as always, will be in the description. But we're going to watch it together. And then we're going to look at some articles and whatnot that have come after this particular video. So let's go ahead and cue it on up and let's go ahead and roll it. Now to the Duke University volleyball player demanding answers this morning, saying she was the target of racist taunts during a match in Utah. This morning she is telling her story, and Janae Norman is here with more on this. Good morning, Janae. You guys, good morning. So listen, Duke, classes started yesterday at Duke. So when I spoke with Rachel Richardson last night, she said she'd shoved the experience in the back of her mind and was focused on school and volleyball. She is a student athlete, but realizes that when people see her, she's a black woman first, and she's <sighs> hoping the racism she endured in the, on the court can be a teaching moment for folks off the court. Richardson again fires that one. New fallout this morning from the volleyball court. Well, at first it was kind of like a, did I hear that right? Like, I didn't really believe it. Duke sophomore Rachel. Now, before we get into it, I want to give her a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she thinks she heard something that she didn't hear. Maybe. But as we continue, you may kind of question that. Richardson says she and her black teammates were targeted with racial slurs and threats during their game against rival BYU over the weekend. The next time I went back to serve, I was like, OK, yep, I definitely heard that right. I immediately just told one of my like most trusted teammates and I was like, I just heard someone use a racial slur like to address me, essentially. Richardson taking to Twitter, saying the heckling lasted for the entire match. And when it turned to threats, they began to feel unsafe. She says both the officials and BYU coaching staff were made aware of the incident during the game, but failed to take the necessary steps to stop the unacceptable behavior and create a safe environment. My coaches and my teammates, they responded immediately to the best of their ability because in that moment, I was like, you know, they're doing something on my behalf. BYU confirming that the fan accused of launching those attacks is not a student and that they are now permanently banned by BYU. Even if, as they say, it wasn't a student who was doing this, there were students nearby. And so the fact that they didn't know what to do in the moment to call him out or to let him know that's not accepted here, you need to stop. Like that's not wanted here. It's a level of ignorance. And so if there's a lack of knowledge on racism and how to deal with it, now, what I want to know is what was the actual slur that was used? Because we're saying a racial slur, it was racism. But what was the word that was allegedly said? That's what I would like to know. Was it the N-word? Was it something else? Like, what's going on? Was it a phrase? Was it a chant? What was it? That's how you have things like this continue to happen. The next night, the BYU athletic director with strong words for their supporters. Cheer them on as loud as you can, but do not cross the line where you would hurt or harm anyone in any way. Richardson has thanked him for his support and says he's been at the forefront of making sure his athletes get the proper education and training to handle any similar encounter effectively. Now we can pause it right there. I'll need to play the entire thing. Of course, this will be in the description, but let's come back here for a moment. Now that's pretty much they, they laid out what's going on. There was somebody in the crowd at BYU in Utah, not in North Carolina at Duke, Chapel Hill, whatever it is. They said some things that were racial against the young lady and her black teammates. Now, the, the, the problem is when you say something like that, it's, it's very damaging because you're casting a negative light on BYU on that particular person. If what was said was said, you got to make sure that it was said. Now, let's look at the response to that particular video, to that particular incident, and then the update that kind of you know, it kind of it kind of questions whether it happened or not. Now, here is Jay Billis. 
It says uh, the reprehensible, immorally contemptible racial slurs and threats aimed at Rachel Richardson and her Duke volleyball teammates last Friday at BYU were beyond unacceptable. Now, one question that comes to my mind is, why is Mitch Richardson the only one speaking about it and not our black teammates? If they were also affected, why aren't they speaking out? Maybe they don't want to be in the media public eye. Maybe uh, Ms. Richardson is the one that wants to carry the torch. I don't really know. But why is she the only one speaking out? Let's see. Um, reprehensible. Marley, okay. Okay. Rachel and the teammates handled this uncon unconscionable conduct with grace, dignity, and courage. For the rest of us, this is a time to stand up and condemn such reprehensible conduct and pledge that this type of disgusting behavior in any form is unacceptable and immoral to those that may believe such slurs and threats are simply free speech. Reasonable and fair-minded people need to meet such speech with their our own, the clear and condemnation of such unacceptable behavior and loud, unmistakable support for all those traumatized by it. Nobody really is going to say free speech when talking about racial slurs. That's not really a thing. You know, you might have a small minority to do something like that, but to address that, that's kind of a jab at a certain kind of people. But anyway, to Rachel and her teammates, we stand with you and have your back. Your courage and strength are an example to us all. Okay, so that's that's that. Now, let's get to... The update, shall we? Now, here's um, some tweets from Greg Price. And there's an article here. Uh, you know, it's a pretty long article. I'll link to this in the description so you can read it for yourself. We're going to go through the highlights. Duke volleyball player Richard Richardson alleged over the weekend that BYU students yelled racial slurs at her. Multiple people who were in the student section have now gone on record to say it never happened. And then here's something else. But wait, it gets worse. One student alleges that the person BYU Athletic says did it was a mentally handicapped man who was not sitting in the student section. He says that they banned an innocent person for life to make their PR mess go away. But wait, it gets even worse. Rachel Richardson has a godmother running for political office in Fort Worth, Texas. She started tweeting about it before Rachel released her statement and had several tweets about how white people suck. And let's look at the... Was it the godmother right here? Lisa Pamplin. Okay, that, that's her right there. Okay, now let's let's check it out. Here's her uh, statement about it. My goddaughter is the only black starter for Duke's volleyball team, which is a misleading statement because she's, the, she's not the only black player, maybe the only black starter, but not the only black player. There are other black teammates. But anyway, while playing yesterday, she was called a blank. I guess that's the N word. I don't know what that is. Every time she served, she was threatened by a white male that told her to watch her back going to the, going to the team bus. A police officer had to put her by their bench. Oh, had to be put by their bench. So he had to have also right by the bench. So all of that was going on. But the, the police are here's some of the anti-white tweets. You already know what that is, though. We don't got to go too much into that. Yeah, but I'm also hearing that the police said it didn't really happen either. You got witnesses that were right there and said it didn't happen. The police possibly said it didn't happen. So the, the question is, what is really going on? Did it actually happen? I can't tell. If it did happen, then why are so many people coming out and saying that it didn't? So especially right now with the way college is, it doesn't matter if it's BYU and Utah, Mormon country. It don't matter really where it is. College in general is super woke, super liberal. So if somebody was to say something like that in the stands, surely somebody would come forward and say, yeah, they did it. They, they said that they wouldn't come to the defense of a racist person. So at best, this is misunderstanding. There was some um, miscommunication. Maybe somebody was saying something that they didn't say. I, I read somewhere that they talked to the man and the man was like, don't hit the ball into the net. That's all he was yelling. He didn't yell anything else. Don't, don't hit the ball into the net. I think that was it. So I don't know how you get the N-word or something else, some other kind of racial slur from don't hit the ball into the net. Uh, maybe the net and, you know, the, the N in the word net sounds like something else. I, I don't know. But what I do know right now is that evidence for this happening is kind of slim to none. But as I close, I want to say this. I hope that she just heard something wrong and it was a misunderstanding. That's what I hope. That's 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 in my heart because I don't want to be yet another racial hoax. We've seen so many hoaxes out there for various reasons. Who knows what the reason is? We've seen that over and over and over and over again. I just hope this time that's not what it is. A misunderstanding. And I like to get to the bottom of it. I like to see the guy that was banned 
go on TV and give her an interview and see if he said what he said. I like to see video come out because when you make this kind of allegations, it's pretty serious. It can impact the entire university. You're talking about money being taken away. It's, it's pretty deep. So I like to see this come to a conclusion and let's get down to the bottom of it. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What do you think? Do you think it's another racial hoax? Do you think it's misunderstanding? Is it done for a particular reason, for some political stuff? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. Do you think that it did happen? And people that are at the college in 2022, when college in general, doesn't matter where it is, East Coast, West Coast, down South, up North, Mormon country, Midwest, do you think that people in the college would defend an outright racist yelling the N-word or whatever else at the black woman? Whatever your thoughts on that are, let me know in the comments. You guys pretty much know where I'm at. I think this didn't happen. And at best, misunderstanding. At worst, some political stuff going on. And the way things are going now, with so much political stuff happening, I wouldn't be surprised. Not in the least bit. Not at all. Not whatsoever. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And as all I got to say for this video, if you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share. And subscribe. Peace.